Hey guys, this is NR. I hope you're doing great today. Welcome to your 35th tutorial in basic statistics in Excel. Now this tutorial is going to build uh, on the last tutorial we had, where we, in the, where we actually um, collected a sample uh, of 60 people, or 60 observations from this large population of tango dancers, and the number of Facebook fronts they had, and we used random numbers in order to achieve this. Uh, what I've done here is I've done this 40 times, okay? See, I've got loads of different samples here that I've collected from our data. Um, and what we want to do is, I want to show you guys that if you take the, the means, i.e. I, the averages from all of these samples, and you put them in their own little distribution, that distribution is going to be normally distributed. Okay? And this is to show you that the, while we can have an extremely non-normal distribution as Facebook friends for Tango Dancers here, if you're unsure about that, just check our earlier tutorials and you see. Even if this is non-normal, the averages, if I had a bunch of different uh, samples like this, is going to be normally distributed. And this is a really important result because that means we can conduct statistics using the normal curve, even for non-normal distributions. So I want the average of each of my samples. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. I want the average of each, this is the first sample, this area. And I'm not using dollar signs here, because what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select this and I'm going to pull it all the way. And when I do it without dollar signs, the data actually moves with us. So now, when I go here all the way, you see, the data that I'm choosing moves with us all the way through here. And I get all the averages for each of my samples. We want to select these averages, like this. And I want to place them here under a new distribution called the sampling distribution. Uh, and I don't want them to be placed horizontally. I want them to be placed vertically. So what I need to do is I need to somehow transpose them. I need to change the way they're, they're listed in Excel. So what I do is I right click. I choose copy. I go over to the location where I want to place my observations of the mean, which are here under the sampling distribution area. I right click and I go paste special. Now here. I first I need to choose just the values. I'm only interested in the in the averages, not any formulas or anything. Uh, and I check in this transpose box here. And transpose is going to change our horizontal sorting to a vertical sorting, like that. It even added some decimal points for us, but those are in that don't mean anything. So I remove them. I make sure it looks good, like that. So here I do have a list of my 40 different sampling averages. Now, if we want to normal approximate these, we can just do it like we've done in the earlier tutorials. Uh, first, we're going to need our, our, our n, so I'm going to count my observations, like that. And we have 40, 40 samples, and each of these samples have their averages listed here. I need to find the, the average of these averages, so I'll write average. There, and I calculate this average. So the average average, I know this can be confusing, but it, it's the average of our list of averages based on these samples from our number of tango dan number of Facebook friends tam tango dancers have. Uh, and the standard deviation, I select my data, like so. And we're just doing this a, a little normal approximation because I want to show you it's normally distributed. So, okay, so we have all the things we need to trans transform these to Z values so we can put place them in one of our normal approximation scatter plots. If you don't know what that is, check out the earlier tutorials. So we take each average and we um, subtract the sampling average from them. And we need a dollar sign here so this doesn't change. We pull it down all the way, all the way through our data set. There, and we get our distances. And uh, in order to standardize them, we're going to divide them by their standard deviations. And we do have toward tutorials about standardizing too. So if you're unsure what I'm doing now, you should check out those tutorials. Okay, so we're moving all the way down through our data set and we have our Z values here. Excellent, now we're ready to create our scatter plot. Uh, I begin by just selecting my Z values here, like so. I go to insert, I choose scatter, and I insert a scatter plot like that. And this doesn't look very, Informative of all, we need to you know do a bunch of stuff before we actually can use this to approximate if we have a normally distributed variable. I'm just making it look a little better, removing the lines and stuff like that. Uh, now I need to go right click on this. I need to go to select data. And as we did in the earlier tutorials, I need to edit my series here because I want the Z values to be placed. I need to remove this there. Uh, I want the Z values to be placed on the X axis 
and these um, x values or our sampling values in this case to be placed on the y-axis so here for the x-axis I go up and I choose my z values all the way down through the material and for my y values I first need to delete this and now I select my y my values for the y-axis here there you see them click OK click OK again and we have this normal approximation scatter plot to make it even neater I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to format this x-axis so the y-axis uh, crosses the x-axis at minus two. So I say minus two there. There, that looks better. And as you can see now, this is actually normally distributed. We have our zero here, and we have our values, and they're fairly equally distributed around this zero. So we don't have any really extreme values. I mean, it's not perfect because we're still working with samples. Uh, but if I did this, if I if, if I took like ten thousand samples from a population, we would actually get almost a perfectly normally distributed um, probability distribution. And this shows you guys that if you take the averages of each of these samples from a non-normal distribution and you check the distribution of these averages they are normally distributed and this is really important to understand um, when, we're, when we're moving on in our tutorials onwards so I hope to see you there uh, play around with this try adding some some samples of your own you know and see how the distribution becomes more and more and more normal as you move along so I hope to see you there guys have a really great time and I'll see you later bye bye